Good evening. Oh, wait. Okay, yes. Good evening, Mech Warriors. I am RJ Base 3, and welcome to my channel. Big ups to both NG, NG, and PGI for the Twitch host. Very special stream tonight. Uh, of course, you guys have probably been getting used to these things from me a little bit lately. Uh, got an interview. Another very popular, well-renowned PGI employee. Uh, and we're gonna, you can see his video right there. You know who it is. It's Alex Iglesias. I've been, I've been advertising it on all the forums and everything recently. I've got my beer. I will hold that up here to the cameras. So Y'all can see it. I'll make sure Alex can see it too. <laughs> got my beer, but it's not a happy hour stream. I'm not going to get drunk tonight. It's just to calm my nerves because these things make me nervous. But Alex Iglesias. Alex, can you hear me, brother? <laughs> okay, I, I take that as a yes. Okay. Alex, good evening, sir. How, how are how, you? You're clearly still yeah, there. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I, I can hear you. I hope, the, I hope the stream can hear you. I think they should, because if they if I can hear you, they, they should be able to too. Uh, you, you are clearly still at work. Why? Why? Why are you at work so late? Oh wait, we see you talking, but you gotta push that push the talk button. Hmm. I'm not hearing you, brother. I was hearing you, but now we're not. Okay, we're having some slight time. I think I think this is one of Alex's first times using Discord. Might not be aware of the bugs that we have with it. I'm gonna turn down the music just a little bit more. We did test it for. Hush your mouth. All right, <laughs> uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, now we can hear you. Not sure what that was. Anyways, so. Okay, so let's try that question again. It's, it's after 6 p.m. in Vancouver. Why are you still at work? No answer? Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Alex, can you hear me? I think I'm a delay. I don't know what's going. On. I think I'm on some sort of delay here. I don't know what's going on. Uh, it's it's a. Uh, might just be a discord thing it sounds like i can hear you now so it might it might be working do you have me muted on well i have my mic muted on hangouts let's make sure we're all muted there i can hear myself through through your audio but i think it's all right i think i think we're good there all right Give me a count to 10 real quick. One. All right, yeah, it, it starts, we start to hear you, then it stops. Maybe, maybe just take off to push the talk. Again, it's that gear icon in the bottom of Discord, go to voice. That's what I'm thinking, Zoof. Might be voice activation not set right. All right, he's back in Discord. Okay. 
Is this better? That is better. We can hear you now. Give me a count to 10 real quick. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Perfect. Okay, we're good. <laughs> All right. Yes, I'm a professional streamer, QPan. We get it. <laughs> we did. We did actually test this, though. We got video working. We tested out Discord. I mean, I thought we were good. Alex, what do you, I mean? I'm bad with technology, oddly enough. That's all right. That's all right. You, you are very good with other things. Let's, let's, let's talk about some of these things for a minute. First, let's get the, the viewers a, a little free stream thing here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm interviewing Alex Iglesias tonight. He's the man that, that, that draws our mechs. He is renowned in the world of Battletech. If uh, you've been playing various the various Battletech games for the past several years, you should know who this man is. Uh, as we go through, there's going to be some time later on in the stream where he's going to answer some of your all's questions. Keep in mind that there are certain things that he cannot or will not answer first and foremost alex at least last time i checked alex you're not a lawyer are you no not really okay so even if he was a lawyer he cannot answer any questions about mm -hmm. the ongoing trial with with uh that company down in california that shall remain nameless we don't like them um also he, he is not a coder or at least that's not his job with PGI. This man is an artist. So questions that are, you know, the popular questions about the game, such as the colorblind thing and all that, he can't answer those questions because he he doesn't work on that side of the game. He works he works on making the mechs beautiful. Okay? So let's not go into that stuff. And plus uh any art that he may or may not be doing for Mech Warrior 5. If it hasn't already been announced by PGI, he can't talk about it. Okay? So, that all being said, I just want to make sure everybody understands certain things he can and can't talk about when it comes to these games. So, that being said, Alex, tell us a little bit about yourself. We know we know you draw mechs. We got, we got that. And we'll get into some deeper... We'll get into some deeper stuff about your mechs. The mechs that you draw really soon but tell us tell us if you could a little bit about you uh where you're from um because I, I read somewhere that you started off in miami is that correct yeah yeah i uh i grew up in miami um i kind of i guess got into video games and sci-fi fantasy stuff early on because um, my uncle at, my uncle was in high school at the time my youngest uncle and he would have all the stuff laying around and uh, oh I'd be going through his uh, going through all of his stuff that I had no idea what any of it meant but the art looked cool and so you know try and ape a lot of the drawings or whatever on loose leaf paper kind of went off from there and I just never quite stopped drawing so <laughs> but uh well okay let's, let's go back to the Miami thing because I I spent a great portion of my life in South Florida uh Boca Raton Fort Lauderdale I was down there and 1992 when hurricane andrew hit uh you know good, good good fun times in south florida in the 90s your last name is iglesias you're from miami are you by any chance of cuban descent yes i am okay uh when did your family come over uh they were first waivers they came over in the 60s wow okay so, but that the the big the big exodus from Cuba happened in the early '80s, right? So you're, you're. Yeah, that would be the Mariel, I believe. Okay. The uh, second wave. All right. So you're of true Cuban descent. I mean, I, 
One of my favorite places in all of Miami is actually Little Havana. Uh, my my father-in-law, the father-in-law, no, my stepfather took me there once when I was a kid. I was really young. Um, I've been back. I had been back to visit it a few times, but Little Havana, uh, Cuban, Cuban uh, life and everything, I always found to be truly fascinating. So I, I was trying to just put two and two together there with your last name, and the fact that you were in Miami there. So I, I, I actually find that to be really fascinating, and really cool about you. So we we have a we have a not only is he I mean, we have a great artist drawing our mechs of Cuban descent. I just think that that's actually the coolest thing ever. I'm a, I'm a, I'm I'm a huge fan of Latin America. I married a Brazilian. So I I'm I'm a big fan of of, of Latin America, the Caribbean, all that. But that cuz that comes with growing up down there. What what do you what do you, what do you miss most about Miami? Or do you miss it? I I do miss Miami. Uh I miss the food. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of food up here in Vancouver, but uh it's, it's not quite the same. Not quite the same. Right. I, I, uh, I, I, yeah. I, I, I always worry about that, you know, being in Kansas City now. I've, got, I've been here for 20 years, and we have barbecue, and I would just worry that if I ever lived anywhere else, I just could never look at barbecue ever the same again. <laughs> but, you know, but that's just, that's that's small compared to Miami to Vancouver. Uh Unfortunately, I'm a pretty poor example of Cuban American. About the only thing, my my Spanish is terrible. But the only <laughs> thing I, I got going for me is uh, really like pork and rice and, and beans, I guess. But <laughs> aside from that, um, Lat not... Latin American staples, <laughs> definitely. I, what I yeah. what I went when I met my fiance, if I didn't come to love beans and rice and pork really quick i was gonna have problems because we ate that three four times a week so it's it, yeah it's it's a part of that culture so vancouver or no i'm sorry miami to vancouver i i know a little bit about the story of how you got involved with with catalyst uh, well let, before we get to that you, you're you're a kid you're in miami uh, you're growing up down there in the South, the South Florida culture. You started to hint on it a little bit. You're, was it your uncle that had all these things lying around the, the place there? That's how you kind of started getting into sci-fi and fantasy? Yeah, like uh, one of my uncles was uh, in high school at the time. He was like a metalhead D&D nerd, <laughs> T-book reader. And so he'd have like shelves of books, boxes of comic books, all these uh, Pirate Masquerade uh, like horse books lying around uh, and I think he was like one of the first people in my immediate family anyway or close to immediate family that uh, that had a gaming computer so he wasn't on it playing and I was visiting, uh, I would usually like try and find time to play the games on it what, what what years are we talking about here early nights early nights okay yeah you know, my, my first introduction to the battletech universe was actually in 89 with the first mech warrior game uh, i was like all 13 years old then so but for you your uncle's place his gaming pc his nerdy stuff uh, we're all nerds, so I feel like I can say that. <laughs> so, uh, what? When did, when did the games, and the the stuff that your uncle had turn into you drawing these things? Uh, pretty much from as far back as I can remember, I was always drawing. Like, I would, I would draw anything. Um, well, I I just stacks of uh of loose leaf paper pencils and just kind of like carve out some territory on the floor somewhere while all the adults were talking and i'd just be drawing away um and it like i would go through uh, game manuals when they actually had you know 
time spent on printing them and so they often had like pictures and and I'd be like reading through those and you know drawing pictures out of them or looking at box art and trying to copy that was was it in that box art BattleTech box art uh eventually yeah um like uh he at one point had gotten some video card that had MechWarrior 2 Mercenaries as a as a bundle, as a software bundle in it. Gotten like a, one of those prime strategy guides for it, which essentially was like a uh, almost TRO. Kind of sit around looking at all these uh, mech pictures and stuff, and I would occasionally play on the computer, and I'd be like drawing the mechs and trying to make up my own mechs that kind of stuff and i would have been around like 10 or 11 at the time hmm. my memory's kind of fuzzy yeah well i think it is for all of us when we go back that many years <laughs> so you you started drawing i'm assuming that was with you know paper and pencil or whatever was handy to draw with at the time when when you when you are when you're drawing now, when you like when you're making these things for us in game, what do you use? I'm um, just uh, using a Cintiq, uh, painting straight into Photoshop. And and what what do you prefer? Like if you had your way, would you do it all digital, or would you just go back to just pencil and paper and and what have you? Uh depends on what I'm trying to do. Like if I'm trying to do some. Professional level work, uh, usually it'll it's going to be Cintiq or Wacom, straight into Photoshop. That's what I've gotten used to over the years. There's certain ideas that just kind of there's certain ideas pop forward when you're just sketching on paper that you don't quite get when you're painting into Photoshop, and I've kind of fallen out of practice on that, so I don't do it very often. But uh, it is very it, it, it's different, I guess. Um, but it's kind of fun in, in its own way that is different from uh, going into Photoshop, I guess. My, my, <laughs> I'm all over the place there. My grandmother was a, a phenomenal painter, a phenomenal artist. Uh, I still have, I have a lot of her artwork in my place. She used to have her own gallery. And I always wished that some of that art talent that she had had rubbed off on me and Unfortunately, none of it did. I can barely even play the video game, let alone try to draw a mech. So that, that's whether you're doing it in Photoshop or or on uh, a paper and pencil or whatever. It, it's 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 quite a talent that you got there. So I'd like to continue exploring that with you. Um. So you discovered BattleTech then at an early age. Was, was it like an instant love affair with the franchise or I mean when, when you when you first when you first were introduced to the Battletech franchise what what did that first blossom into for you I mean playing the games board game did you start reading the novels what what was the next step from your introduction uh, I think it would have been I started off uh, playing the video games, like I, I think I started off um, that uh, Sega Genesis uh, top-down like game where you controlled the Mad Cat all over the place. Um, or two mercenaries, and I think from there I started getting into started getting into the books, like around twelve or so, and through and from that point into high school i just started reading as many of the books that i could i don't know there was just something in the fluff that I don't know, grabbed me i guess um and whenever i'd go to the bookstore and they would have like battle tech books around i'd just you know snatch them up um i didn't actually get into the board game until much much later i had all this material that I had collected that was for playing the board game, but I only really looked at the art and read the fluff and had no idea how the rules work, and I had no one to play it with. Um, but I just 
really liked the setting, so I just kept collecting it. Um, I didn't actually get into the board game until maybe the uh, the last couple of years, oddly enough. I, oh, I, I totally understand that. And Mark was actually giving me a hard time about that because I've been playing like video games since 1989. I've been re I've read a lot, many, not all of them, but read many of the books, and I've never once played the board game. So Mark was kind of giving me a little bit of a, a hard time about that. But some, some people have, have said that they're going to try to get me to play the board game at Metcon. So hopefully, maybe I can actually get an opportunity to do that. But go, going back, I actually played the card game before I played the board game. Oh, that one I actually have it here. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, ignore that. Hold on. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna enlarge your your video I'm here. Yes, here. <laughs> I don't I don't take care of my things very well, but this is about four hundred whoops. <laughs> four hundred odd cards, give or take. Kinda of spilled some. Yeah. <laughs> trying to oh, okay that's the one i want so i want to move this up i was trying to make it so that i we could see that i enlarged your image on the stream there and i totally messed it up because i'm such a pro streamer oh there we go, so, uh, we go. So, so somebody was actually talking about these things recently i think it was on reddit or something and i i i guess the, the card series was actually very short-lived yeah, uh, I played it mostly through high school, and I was never very good. <laughs> all of my uh, all of my friends could easily outplay me. I was really bad at card games, but uh, eh, I like the art and I like collecting them. Right. And, yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's talk about the books for a minute because uh, I had Lauren in an interview here a couple a couple weeks ago. And I and she admitted that she's never read any of the books, and so I was I was thinking, well, that might be something good for her to do on that long flight, at, at, you know, at, that long flight out of, Van, out of out of Canada. And she mentioned that you have quite the collection in your little workspace there at PGI. Is that true? Uh, I have like. Oh, hold on. Yeah, let's see. Kind of see it back there in the shelf. All right. It's it's mostly just uh, source books and uh, TROs, and manual stuff like that. I guess. All right. Uh, is that now? If, if let's say let's say somebody is a brand new hire at PGI, the first day in the job. Hired because they're incredibly artistic or a really good coder or what have you, but they need to learn more about the biotech universe. If they came into your office and said, can I borrow a book? Is that something that could be done? Or is that like, is that your, the coveted collection that never leaves your office? I, I got, uh, I got books circulating around the place. Okay. So, so, so someone could easily come to you if they needed some, some back to basics mech mech details and and, and lore yep I, i'm i'm seeing your models too i'm looking on top of your bookshelf and you've got the what do, what do you got up there i mean i can see a couple of i see what's the what's the pink thing i have to ask what the pink thing is oh that would be uh overwatch uh overwatch's diva okay i've only played overwatch once so <laughs> I, I, I don't know don't know a whole lot about the game they had a mech in it Dude, I liked it. <laughs> yeah, you had to get it. What? Uh, I had to get it. What other mechs are up there? It looks like I see a, a catapult. Is that the green one in front there that I see? Uh, that would be a stalker. There's a king crab. Or no alpha from uh, Pacific Rim. There's an awesome in the back. 
There's a Jupiter behind the uh, King Crab. There's a BT from Titanfall. There's a Thanatos over here. Um, and a whole bunch of assorted minis. We got these guys from oh, neat. when I was last at Gen Con. We got them. So as King, part of the, King uh, Crab and Mini Crab or a regular crab. Very cool. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. So, so when you call yourself the resident mechologist at PGI, that, that's no joke. I mean, you don't just draw the mechs, but you, you got a long, detailed history, and the 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 models and everything to prove it. I mean, it, it's because like when I when I interviewed Mark, he pulled out a couple of uh, props from Stargate because you know he used to work on Stargate, and yeah. when I interviewed Lauren, well, it was just her basically but you've got you've got it all right there behind you and so when you call yourself the resident mechologist you, you're not kidding you're you're like the you're like the pgi expert in all things mechs aren't you well between me and mark and chris we're kind of i guess the brain trust i suppose of just weird lore facts i suppose uh, what is not pictured in here is I've got like back home in Miami about like five feet thick or so worth of novels stacked end to end on a bookshelf. Uh, but <laughs> Mom and dad keep those safe for you? Yeah. Although with the hurricane, I Oh, yeah. Now, so. See, yeah so my, I still have a lot of family in South Florida. I haven't even looked at the latest news on that. That's the last, the last thing I saw was early this morning. That hurricane looks like it's gonna it's making a beeline straight for South Florida. Is that is that still the latest? Uh, I don't know. I've uh, I've been kind of scared to look. Um, yeah, yeah, me too. Probably gonna check after this and give him a call. Were were you were you around for Andrew Hurricane Andrew in 1992? I slept through it. <laughs> oh, <you're a> bastard. <laughs> At seven years old, I slept through Andrew. Um, I just kind of woke up after the storm. I apparently had been up and trying to hold the doors closed and, you know, wind screaming and everything. And apparently I was completely sound asleep and missed the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I was in South Lauderdale at the time. And you know, we, we were pretty, I don't know, 30 minutes north of Homestead, maybe, maybe 40 minutes. That's where, that's where the eye went over. Homestead, yeah. yeah. I still remember. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I ended up spending the night sitting in about six inches of water in a closet while my roof was being peeled off and my windows were busted out. I was in this inner closet of the, of the, the, whatever, apartment, condo thingy we were in. And that was how I, I went through the night there. Good, good memories of that particular night. <laughs> but so yeah, I'm, I'm. I guess I'm like, I'm, I've been a little scared to take a, really take a look at what's going on with that hurricane because I, I know my parents are going to be right in the path of that. But I'll probably look at that as, yeah. soon, as soon as I'm done here with, with, with you, actually. Well, let's let's, yeah. let's 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 talk about happy things again. Let's talk about oh, mechs, yeah. mechs and eternal war in the inner sphere and things of that nature. You know, war is always a much brighter topic than hurricanes, right? Of course, <laughs> especially of course. fantasy sci-fi war involving big, giant, stompy robots. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at the questions here that I wrote out for you. Let's see, do you play any of the games, board or video game? You can check that off as a yes. You can have a collection of Battletech books. Uh. Out of out of all the books you read, the one I haven't had, talked to you about yet, but out of all the books you read, the the novels, which is your favorite? Hmm. Um. I'd have to say. Oh, granted, I haven't reread those novels in a very long time, so this is going entirely off of whatever you know teenage me thought was probably coolest at the time, and I'm kind of don't want to go back and reread them purely because 
nostalgia would hold up. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I was a big fan of the um, uh, the books that covered the uh, Comanches Caballeros books. Um, the uh, I think they were written by Victor Milan, simply because they just kind of covered the kind of mercenary um, company aspect type stuff. I guess the Avanti's Angels as well. Any of the ones that really covered like the uh, kind of hard scrabble merc life books. I guess uh, Decision at Thunder Rift, considering that was the first one I read too. So yeah, I, think I it was guess the there first was that. One many of us read it was the first book. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I I don't think I read nearly as many of them as you, and some of them. I've forgotten most of them. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> to some... be yeah, I can. I, I know I read a couple when I was a kid. Uh, a lot of them I didn't. Not a lot of them, but several of them I didn't read until actually just a few years ago when I started playing Mech Warrior Online on a, on a much more regular basis. The most recent one I read was Heir to the Dragon. Remember that one about Theodore Korea? Oh crap! Uh, maybe. I think I read that. That one had a Hunchback on the cover, didn't it? Or no? I only got the digital version. I don't know, but I think it was I, I think it was just the Karita the Karita emblem on it. If I'm not mistaken, but oh, okay. Reg regardless, it's it just it, it, it's just I think it's interesting though how the books that were written in the 80s and 90s, even today, because they're talking about the future and all this future tech, they still really hold up in in a manner, especially when you're so involved in the games, whether they're board or video games. They still they still hold up in that regard because i mean after i got done reading heir to the dragon i was i even named my my uh world's competitive team in 2016 after the, the legion of vega we called ourselves the mercs of vega and i've been i've been asking for the legion of vega logo to get put into the game for the longest time and that's just because i read i read that book for the first time just a few years ago when I... they still they, the books still work yeah, I, but I hadn't I haven't read the series that you were talking about. I'm gonna have to look that one up. It was only like it was only like three novels, I think, maybe two. Okay. So it it, it was just like a short run type thing. Um, honestly, the the stuff I've read recently has actually been the um, the short story compilations that Catalyst has done through Battle Corps oh, or Battle Core, I guess. The very recent ones that that they've been. I know they've been putting out some new stuff in the past uh, the past couple of years here. Okay, so I haven't read any of that yet. Uh, they're pretty good actually. I, I just read one recently. I think it came out this year. Um, that basically covers you know the entire historical run of one specific grasshopper mech, oh. like from toppers were still in their prototype phase right after the fall of star league or whatever um till the uh the uh just after i think the word of blake jihad there's like all these different owners and all the different stories and you know trying to get this this grasshopper running again or some weird situation that just happens to involve the grasshopper as a side note but every story starts off with the uh with the um, next character kind of coming into possession of it oh. means usually skipping 10 years, 20 years at a time. If, if, is, are those, are those, are those short stories, are they free to read on, on, on the catalyst site? I don't know. Um, I, I only saw it through the, uh, through the book itself. I okay. picked it up when I was at, Gen Con this year. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, you Gen Con people. Make us all jealous, why don't you? <laughs> all right, well, actually, I know we're not supposed to go to the viewer questions yet, but MDM Zero, who's one of the uh, M MRBC shoutcasters, he asked a really good question that I think was a good follow up, and that is what is your favorite time period in the MWO universe or the Battletech universe? I thought that was actually a really hmm. good question. Uh, I guess it kind of depends. Um, I really do like the sort of 
Mad Max in space kind of situation of like the uh, late succession wars. So I, I do think that that can be very appealing, especially since you don't have uh, kind of getting in the way of, uh, of just, you know, people using 300 year old uh, war machines to like the head and they don't know how they work properly and they're poorly maintained. And there's a certain charm to that. Uh, on the other hand, playing with lots of cool toys be fun so like late jihad or after that where you get into the 3145s or whatever you know you get to play with all those 40s or reinforced structure or heavy ppcs with capacitors and all that kind of fun stuff um you know that's got its own charm too i guess i i, I guess i end up at the extremes i kind of like the really late Time and the really early timeline as well. The stuff in between, eh, I could take it or leave it. <laughs> the, when, when I when I always played the games, like I said, I start off with Mech Warrior One in 1989, but I always had to go through these big long spurts in between when I could play them, based off if I had a working computer or a game console. And as a kid, you know, I I, I wasn't surrounded by I, I didn't have family members I should say that were very supportive of the sci-fi fantasy realm thing so anything that i wanted to do regarding any of that i had to do myself so i often went for these long spurts in between there are certain parts of the, the battletech universe that i didn't even learn about until after i got back into mwo and started going back in the lore and everything and i just started reading one of the, I, mean, I know this is a time period that a lot of people don't like I just started reading about, uh, oh, the the blackout, the blackout. Oh yeah, the the dark age stuff, right? Yeah, the dark age stuff. I know I've heard a lot of people complain about that, but I'm I'm I just started reading Dark Age number one, and I really like the story so far. I, I, I hope I'm not a weirdo by saying that, but I do really <laughs> like it. Um sure if you had said that uh you know back in the early 2000s there'd probably be a whole bunch of angry forum comments about it or something yeah. well that, <laughs> the internet is the internet after all I, I i can't make a single post on reddit without getting downvoted to oblivion so i'm used to that anyways all right so let's see here bt book was your favorite oh okay so you're really into the books you're you're drawing your mechs, you're playing the games. Then Gen Con 2007. That was when you first right. hooked up with Catalyst, right? Correct. Um, so what happened was... Well, so, well, uh, how, how, you, don't okay. look, you don't look very old now. How old were you in 2007 when, uh, when, when, you, when, when you made this connection with Catalyst? I, cause you had to be a kid. Uh, I would have been 23. You were a kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well t tell us about this this whole thing here. Because, I mean, I, I, I've read about this. I know this is a story you probably had to tell many times. But I, I, I think this is fascinating. So it, please guys, walk us through this whole scenario. Okay. So 2007, I would have been just out of, well, I would have been just starting my first job at, uh, at Day One Studios, and sometime around that point, I had work done some artwork for Cthulhu Tech for like a hundred bucks, just some mech drawings, and the uh, art director Mike Valancourt had been asking me. I'm sorry. I had done the artwork the previous year, uh, I think probably before I even got the job at Day One Studios. And he had been bugging me, like, hey, Alex, you know, you did this work for us, blah, blah, blah. Do you want to come to Gen Con? And I'm like, eh, like, do you want to come to Gen Con? And he just 
bugged me for about a year if I wanted to go to Gen Con. The last minute, I finally said, yeah, fine, I'll go to Gen Con. Hmm. And I can't believe you had to twist your arm that much just to get you to go. <laughs> well, I mean, it was a big trip and all this stuff, and I had other stuff to do, but, you know, I thought it might be interesting. Okay. You know, because I had done a couple mech drawings for a pittance, basically. And what I didn't know was that two weeks prior to Gen Con visit, or Gen Con trip, um, his company publishers from, I forget which, to Catalyst. And so we ended up sharing a booth with Catalyst when we got there. And I didn't, like, at that time, I had Battletech had kind of fallen off my radar. Um, I had kind of lapsed in interest for like a span of about four years or so, mostly like around college and such. And I had known that after FASA went down, FanPro took over and then FanPro went under and then WizKids took over and WizKids went under and then like I knew that Catalyst had taken over, but I didn't really know anything about Catalyst. And by that point, I had, you know, stopped paying attention. And when I get to the booth at, at the uh, at Gen Con, um, I start looking around at the, oh, let me rewind a bit. I just, I figured I'd be stuck at this booth. I figured I'd take a laptop with me with a Wacom tablet and kill time drawing. Um, anyway, I to the uh, to the booth and I'm looking at the name tags of the people in the Catalyst booth, and I'm like, these names look familiar. Blainley Pardo, Lauren Coleman? Right. Pretty sure I remember these names from, holy crap, you know, these guys are all ex, you know, original writers, ex original FASA, took like a maybe you know, a couple minutes for it to sink in. And when I found out that Catalyst was all just, you know, old devs that had gone back and uh, gone back into their old franchise, I guess, um, I took it upon myself to start immediately drawing mech stuff right then and there on the laptop. Right. Got noticed by Brent, the art director, and within about a month or so, um, I was doing like uh, book covers on the side for them. And that kind of went on for a number of years. But yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so they had to twist your arm just to even go to this thing. And then what ended up happening was the great, the great mechologist was discovered. And for you, <laughs> it's been, it's been this, this, I mean, you, you, You've been like the guy since 2007. Is that true? Yeah. There are other guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but okay. All right, I'm probably taking that a little bit too far there, but uh, there, there's a lot of people that credit you with taking Battletech into the modern age with the work that you've done with PGI and subsequently uh, Hairbrain Schemes. We can get into that here, actually just a second what i what i'm going to suggest though alex uh I'm, we're gonna do a giveaway here in a second uh bombadil darren gave me a bunch of codes to give away i would like to take a, a if you don't mind i'd like to take a quick five minute break uh use the restroom uh grab a beer what have you if, you, if you're okay with that and then we can do a short give or a quick giveaway right when we get back Does that sound good to you Okay, so I'll tell you, let me get things pulled up here. We're going to play some videos. Do you, do you know who... Are you familiar with George nope. Ledoux and Duncan Fisher? Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. I uh, actually met him for the first time in person uh, last MechCon. Um, I, 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 for hours. I, I tweeted, oh, I, since we know, okay, you're PGI, and since all the other PGI people are watching, I tweeted a happy birthday to George Ledoux today. It is his birthday. 
And I said, I can't wait to see you at Metcon. And you know what the you know what reply I got? What? He hasn't been invited yet. And I was like, I I, I was sad, but I, I I think I think Darren said I think Darren told me he was working on that, so I think we're all good there. All right. All right. All right. I'm gonna go to my be right back screen. And I'm gonna mute up here on Discord, and I'll be back with you in uh, about five minutes. All right, sir. All right. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go to this screen. You're still seeing Alex because that's on that screen over there. And so we're gonna take this over here, make it nice and big. And I will be right back, kids, along with Alex. Hello, Mech fans. Duncan Fisher here. You know, it's not easy being the voice of Solaris. The crowds, the mech jocks, the girls the less-than-savory characters. And in the middle of it all is Duncan Fisher, voice of the common man, bringing you all of the mech action I can shove through these two eyeballs. People ask me, Duncan, what's your secret? Well, folks, I suppose it's time to come clean. I don't do this because it's my job. I do it for you. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Duncan Fisher is a man of the people. And my people want bloody, violent, mech-on-mech -mech action 24-7. When I get up in the morning, with last night's hangover pounding away at my head, and pull on my pants, I do it because decency demands that I not walk to breakfast naked. Once again, I do it for you. And after a breakfast scotch or two, this announcer's voice of mine is ready to give you what you need. So what's my secret? Chronic alcoholism, by the sound of it. But that's how the business rolls on Solaris. So kids, next time you get to thinking that you want to be an announcer on Solaris 7, remember your old pal Duncan Fisher and send me a bottle or two. It might just get your foot in the door. This has been the Duncan Fisher Minute. Zwerf! No, no, Zwerf, Zwerf, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Friends, 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 friends. Yeah, friends, yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's go. Come on, follow me. I will, I will shoot something. Come on. Oh. Right. You see, where's my team? Oh, they're gonna shoot you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. Let's be honest. Okay, this is way too easy. Oh. We got faster, Joey. Oh, oh, uh, oh, there it is. We're flying. Oh, oh my god, no! No, 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 no! What? What? Oh my god. Get Get Zoe. We are totally flying. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god, where am I going? Flying across I'm going in enemy territory, Paul. No. Somebody. No, Paul, I'm going to, like, the end of this the is, world. This is messed up. <laughs> this is really messed up. <laughs> There's a prime dive war front over there. Oh, oh, oh! Let's go! Too many! Oh, rip. Oh my god, he's in the tree. He's in the tree. Which he tree? Must be in the tree. I don't know. <laughs> he's up there. He's in the tree. He's like no, the predator. <laughs> I'm scared. He's like a tiger. Pants. I see you. <laughs> oh my god. Beef, are you hiding? Yes, I am. <laughs> he's really shut down somewhere. In a tree. Is he in a tree? Hello. Hi everyone. Get him! Hello. Get beef! No, you won't. I am a carnivore. You got this beef. You are oh oh shit! Yeah! Oh! Yes! Oh! 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 Come on! Oh! 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 Maybe he will poke on that side. Uh oh. Oh shit, goodbye. Hey, come back here, beef. No. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh, well, okay. Turn around and shoot him. Oh my god. Oh shit. Really? <laughs> no! <laughs> this really? is not fair! This is not fair! <laughs> here we go, here we go. Ah! Oh my god! No! I'm not dead, I'm not dead, okay. You got it, Beef, you Are you still it. alive? Override. Oh! Oh, no. No more speed, let's go. 
Oh! Oh, it's <laughs> Yes! <laughs> I, I got uh -oh, this, I got uh -oh, this. Uh -oh, uh -oh. <gasps> no! no! Prepare to die! Yeah, that no. looks so damn bad in slow move. Don't twist away from me. Face me! <laughs> <laughs> Don't twist Face the storm! What? Oh! 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 Hello again, mech fans. Duncan Fisher here. People tell me, Duncan, you're the only announcer I care to hear. Nobody brings me into the mech action like you do. Why, I even read about mech matches with your voice in my head. Well, that's flattering to hear. It takes years, decades, to cultivate a fan base like mine. You know, back when I was a mech jock, people loved me when I won and hated me when I didn't. During that time, I learned an important life lesson that I want to share with you, my loyal fans. Life is all about winning. If you're not winning, you're not anybody. Once I figured that out, I knew what I had to do. No, not sabotage my opponent's mechs, though that wouldn't have been a bad idea. No, my path to glory was one of a greater calling. I set out to become the voice of Solaris 7. And today, despite all the scandals and investigations into my questionable ethical behavior, I'm at the top. No matter which mech jock wins the match, Duncan Fisher is always in the winner's circle. So there you have it, folks. Win above all else, and nobody cares how you played the game. This has been the Duncan Fisher Minute. The Duncan Fisher Minute is written by David Martin. Produced and performed by George Ledoux and Voices in My Head Productions. Based on characters created by Ferret Bodwin and George Ledoux. Any similarity to persons living or dead is ridiculous. All right, kids, we are back. Hope you enjoyed the Duncan Fisher Minute. Uh, let me get rid of this so you can see Alex again. There he is. Ooh. Hi, Alex. Hello. Okay, hey, so... Uh, Little known fact about the Duncan Fisher Minute, uh, the the female voice that you hear at the end of Duncan Fisher Minute, that is uh, Laura Shaw, who is also known as BB Wolf, a very uh, avid fan of the BattleTech franchise, and uh, she does she does that a lot of work with Duncan. Actually, they tend to work together. What what's what's okay? RJ, what, is my is my volume better at least? Can you guys hear me better? I had to adjust it in my volume control options here. Let me make sure that that is actually still set. Can you hear me all right, Ox? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay, so I got that turned up. Okay, volume's good now. They said. Okay, so we're gonna do we're gonna do a giveaway. We're gonna give away a uh, thousand MC. For MWO. And Alex, since you are the guest of honor, you get to pick the code word that the viewers have to type. You, yeah, you're going to, you, you, you get to pick the code word that the viewers get to type in Twitch chat to, to win or to get a chance to win 1000 MC. So you, you pick it, mm -hmm. and they have to type it for their chance to win. What should it be? Okay. Anything you want. Uh, okay. uh, plan ERPPCs are OP. Plan ERPPCs are OP. Okay, so it's Plan ERPPCs are OP. I'm going to type that into the Twitch chat here. Hashtag. Find ERPPCs are OP to enter to win 1,000 MC. 
All right, we got we have three people entered, so we'll let that simmer for a little bit while we continue chatting about well, you. <laughs> goody goody. All right, so uh, we were chatting about how you came in to do some work for Catalyst. You currently are occupying an office with PGI in Vancouver. How you can live in Vancouver after Miami is is incredible to me. But I, from whatever I've never been there. What everybody tells me, it's an absolutely beautiful city, beautiful area of the country. So I, I am actually looking forward to seeing it. Of course, I'm in Kansas City from South Florida, so people would say I'm crazy because I think Vancouver would be much better than Kansas City. But that's just how things are. It is pretty mild here. That's what I hear. I was in Seattle once a long time ago. 17 years ago and it was actually it was pretty mild I was there in january and i actually really liked it but let's get back to catalyst so you're occupying that office with pgi you're in vancouver do you still do any work for catalyst do they can they still hire you out to do artwork for anything in the BattleTech games uh yeah i just haven't had the time to do anything lately i guess uh, I think the last thing I did was the, uh, it was a cover for the double blind, um, I guess. Cover for the what? The double blind? The, ebook. The double blind ebook. Okay. Yeah. Well, one of the Avanti's Angels novels, they re-released it as an ebook, I think. Okay. Well, if any, if any of our Twitch viewers could possibly get a link to that and post it in Twitch chat, so... We could take a look at that because I don't know. I'm not even sure that I've seen it. Is that is that by any chance is that on your uh, is that on your Deviant Art page? Uh, it might be. I honestly <laughs> don't pay enough attention to my Deviant Art page. Let me check. Because uh, I, I do have a couple of things on there. Some box some box covers that you did. One featuring an Atlas. The other one featuring a Timberwolf, which I actually have up on screen on the on the splash page. Double blind cover would be the most recent image I did. It's the one with oh, the. Yeah. Um, it was posted. Either. It was posted. Somebody got. I'm, Omni got it. BattleTech Legends Double Blind, by Lauren L. Coleman. That is cool. Oh, let's see. I'm gonna go to my Twitch page here and click on it, and then we're gonna put this up for everybody to see. Uh, so. Bottom center. Yeah, they can see they can see that now. That that is what what mech is that? That would be a Caesar. Say that again? Uh that would be a Caesar. A Caesar, or see, Kaiser, I... however you pronounce it. And what era what era is that battle mech? Because that the thing looks really freaking cool. Uh, I think it was probably mid thirty fifties, probably. Oh, Oh, so there is so there's always the possibility this could be in the game. I mean, I I guess. You guess. I, you, you, I know you're not allowed to say what mechs you're currently working on that haven't been announced yet. We're not going to go there. But I mean, if it's mid 3050s, that's in our current timeline. The possibility is always there that, that something like that could be in the game. That's a that's a really cool looking mech. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> Oh, it's uh, it's essentially based off of the uh, the Davions making their own version of like the Cataphract with uh, Clan Invasion era tech. So it had like an ERPPC and a Gauss rifle and some pulse lasers or something. Okay, I gotta move some things around on my stream here because I got my uh, my overlays all messed up. Take that, just move that over there. There we go. All right, let's go back to the questions then. Uh, okay, we talk about what book is your favorite? Do you still work for Catalyst? We talked about how you got from South Florida to PGI. Oh, okay. Um, all right, so you're in the PGI studio. You're no longer in sunny South Florida going through the hurricanes. You're drawing mechs. Russ walks up to your office and says, okay, we've made the decision. This is the mech that you're going to do next. 
or that we want to introduce mm. next. How does that is that how the process works, or uh, when it comes to when it comes to getting a new mech in the game, how does it get from the decision that this is the mech that goes in the game to the finished product that you're given to Mark to make the 3D model of? I mean, how, how walk us through that process? Uh, it depends. It's varied from mech to mech over time, but like in some cases, it uh, it's been, hey, we want to get this mech in, or this is available in the timeline. Let's do this one. Um, there have been cases where we've all done like a round table and have decided, you know, which one's next. You know, paring down a list, that sort of thing. Um, but ultimately, it's you know. Hey, we're going to be doing these mechs, so I just <laughs> right. Okay, so then, it, so then it gets to you. You know that this is the latest mech that's going to be that's going to be well, that the next mech that's going to be done. Where do, where does your process start? I mean, if if it's a mech that you've drawn before, do you go back to your old drawings, or do you have to go back to old source books before? Because it might be a mech that came out before you started work for PGI or whatever. I mean, what, 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 what source material do you go to when you, when you, when you start drawing these things? Uh, all of the above, really. Um, I'll be looking at the minis. I'll be looking at the old Dwayne Luce drawings or the original art. If it wasn't Dwayne Luce, the, any art from the card games, um, I mean, yeah, I'll look at all sorts of art that is vaguely associated with that particular mech, including stuff I've drawn in the past, and I'll, you know, try and find the commonalities are, what makes a design tick, and try to bring that kind of stuff uh, foreground, I guess, like, to the surface. Okay. Uh, Stream is telling me my sound is fading hold on here stream is it all of the sound or is it oh yeah i see that it's my line in volume i'm not sure why it's doing that all right well i'm just gonna keep that up i think i have something randomly controlling my audio all right well we'll just stick with this i'll just keep adjusting it as i go thank you stream for letting me know appreciate it all right, so the cards. Oh wait, somebody asked a really good question. Now, okay, what? How much? How much time does it take from from floating the mech idea to you being finished on the drawing board? I mean, I'm sure that kind of changes from mech to mech and everything, but roughly from the time that the idea is first floated to the time that you finish it and are ready to hand it off to Mark, how much time are we talking about there? Usually around. Uh maybe two and a half weeks or so i'm kind of slow drawing well i don't think anybody's going to complain about that again i mean I'm, what, what, i think sure people have had their problems with this game over the years floating down again i don't know why it's doing that uh i, I know people have had their problems with this game over okay. the years i know that you know they don't like a decision that pgi has made for whatever reason and the PGI can't keep everybody happy all of the time. But one thing that is, that is, that that people seem to love is the artwork that goes into this game. People love the way these mechs look. And if it takes you two weeks then to, or if it takes you, yeah, if it takes you two weeks to create one of these mechs that we get to play with. I, I think I think you could even be allotted more time there because nobody can deny that these mechs are freaking gorgeous. You, you do you do fabulous work with these things. Thank you. You're you're most certainly welcome. All right, I'm gonna slide this over here. But uh, viewers, I am watching it. It's happening right in front of me. My volume keeps going up and down, and I I do not know why something. Something is controlling my volume. 
I don't know what it is. I'll tell you what. Why don't we? Why don't I figure this out? Why don't we do the drawing for the thousand MC? And I'm gonna scroll back up here. Remember, it's hashtag Clan ERPPCs are OP for your chance to win 1,000 MC. We are going to do that drawing here in about 30 seconds. I'm gonna let you guys give you guys one more chance. Oh, I can't even type today, apparently. All right. Our volume seems to be holding there. That's good. We're going to give you guys about 10, 15 more seconds. Then we're going to do the drawing for 1,000 MC. Plan ERP, PPCs, ROP. I don't even think I spelled it right. ERPPC. Well, we've got we've got 12 people entered to win, so the odds are good. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna type in the right thing here. Yeah, what the one I just put in? That's what you want to type. All right, so let's go to the giveaway tool here. We're gonna put the volume or the music down. All right, 1,000 MC. Something is definitely controlling my volume there. It's driving me nuts. All right, let's see who wins. All right, it looks like Mez44, longtime follower of the stream. Congratulations, Mez. I am going to send that to you here in a Twitch message in just a couple of seconds. Let's get the music going again here. 1000 MC going to Mez. Let me find the code first. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to cut that over here to the stream. And then let's find Mez in the list of viewers here. He's one on my stream before. I think he has anyway. All right, Mez, I just whispered you the code. Congratulations. 1000 MC is all yours. All right, so let me get up my volume properties here so I can keep an eye on that. Okay, so yeah, some of my mic problems, everybody, is because I use a dynamic microphone. That's one of the things I need to get, actually, is a good uh, condenser microphone so that if I do turn my voice away, you can still hear me okay. That's, it's on my list of things to improve, everybody. So my apologies for the volume problems. I see it moving up and down as we speak here. All right, so, Alex, uh, got that... We talked about the software they use. Okay. I think we all know the answer to this question. If if the mechs that we're playing in MechWarrior Online all started off as drawings you created, and PGI is sharing their art with harebrained schemes for the Battletech game, does that mean that when we're playing the Battletech game, those mechs that we're playing in the Battletech game are mechs that came from your drawings? I mean, I guess so. You, 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 okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I suppose they're, they're designs based off of my concept art, so. <laughs> but, I mean, it's a very different game. It's balanced, return-based, but I do feel a bit of pride in that. Yeah, I would. I mean, Mark was kind of talking about all about. Actually, Mark was a little upset because, like, I guess the air, based off of when he started with PGI, 
And the the mechs that they're using in the game, he, Mark was I guess, was working on mechs that came later in the game. So I guess his his opportunity to see some of his artwork in the BattleTech game would be if they ever introduced the assassin. So, but you you've been working with PGI and MechWare Online since the beginning, pretty much, right? Uh yeah, yeah, five years now. Okay, so yeah, that so when I'm when I'm playing BattleTech and I'm running around in that hunchback trying to do a death from above, well, I can't do it with a hunchback. There's no jump jets. Uh, my shadow cat, you or, or, or shadow hawk. Yeah, yeah, you could. You go off the cliff. <laughs> I mean, my shadow hawk. Shadow hawk's got jump jets. I can, I can do a death from above in that. So when I'm doing that and I'm going to do my death from above or throwing that melee attack in BattleTech, that shadow hawk I'm in came from your drawing. That's really cool. And then I go into Matt MechWarrior Online, and I pull up my Shadowhawk in MechWarrior Online, and again, came from your drawing. You, you're in multiple video games, dude. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that's, every, that's every kid's dream. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a technology teacher for a living. I teach little kids how to use technology from ages four to 14. And if I were to, if I were to ask my eighth grade class, you know what what do they want to do what do they want to do when they're an adult and they're out of college three quarters of those boys will say they want to make video games and you are making you're doing the art for video games you're you're, you're like every 14 you have every 14 year old boy's fantasy job that is yeah <laughs> that is really cool i probably wouldn't have believed myself if i had traveled back in time and told myself that this is what I'd be doing so <laughs> yeah uh, if I, it's weird if you no sorry go ahead. if you travel back just 15 years ago to when I was a nightclub and rave DJ and had you told me I was gonna be a school teacher I would have told you you were on drugs because that was that was good <laughs> that wasn't gonna happen but yet here here we are so but yeah excellent work there all right uh out of all the mechs that you have drawn and that have entered the game in MechWarrior Online, subsequently BattleTech, hopefully MechWarrior 5, uh, which one are you most proud of? Still gotta keep saying King Crab. King Crab's my favorite. King Mainly, Crab. yeah. All right. Well, let's let's take a look at the king crab i'm gonna pull up the game right now we're gonna pull up the one in in the game uh actually i need to be down here i'm gonna pull up bottom center and my window is messed up of course it is apparently i didn't prep any of this right all right the king crab select mech salt uh inner sphere King Crab. And then we're going to go back home. All right. So what is it about this mech? What, I mean, I mean, what, what, when the Battletech game was first announced, there was an image that they put out of a King Crab walking across the battlefield with tanks and everything down below. And it was like, it's probably one of the best, one of the best images I've seen that kind of that truly depicts the size of some of these mechs. And so I admit that when I look at the King Crab, I really, really like it. But we, when we look at the drawing, when you look at the drawings that you created this mech and how it turned out in game, what what do you like most most of all about it? And it is the representation in game true to what you had envisioned when you drew it? Yeah, yeah, it was. Like I really just wanted to have that, you know short compressed carapace kind of look i really like uh reverse jointed legged mechs the chicken legs i really like the chicken legs and the claws i mean i i advocated for the king crab for a long long time and like when it was finally decided like yeah we're going with the king crab i was pretty much pooping and hollering and uh I was like, the claws, the claws, yeah. You probably already had your really like the claws. Them too, didn't you? Loose doodles that I had done some time before. Uh, one with the spy crab and stuff. But 
Well, it is. I mean, when, I, never, I know when this thing came out, it was a favorite of mine for quite a while. Video games being how they are, you know, we 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 get our favorites. We oh yeah, there's my volume controls. That's good. Uh, we get our favorites. The mechs become meta. They fall out of meta, etc. But typically, a hundred ton, a hundred ton mech in a game usually is still pretty good. So I, I used to have fun with my king crabs. I'm hearing a weird buzzing noise. Do you hear that? Uh, no. Oh, that might have been you. I might have been a microphone thing. I'm not sure. All right, let me get back to my questions. I'm gonna pull up the right window again. All right. Um. Are there any mechs that are currently in? Mech Warrior Online that you think that you would really like a chance to redo or go over again? Yeah, just uh, I'd love to go back and do like little detail passes here and there add a certain curve here or a little extra detail there but uh, unfortunately that would be a tremendous amount of uh, work and the texture artist would probably kill me Yeah, so, I, can, there's that. I can see that <laughs> Well, Lauren's out of the country now, so you don't have to worry about that one at least. But, that, I don't, but from what she said, what there's there's there were three or four of them working there at one at one point. So, yeah, yeah, we don't want them to kill you today at least. <laughs> All right. Well, those that's the majority of my main questions. Uh, got a couple quick flash questions here for you. Uh, when you're going to work, public public transportation or do you drive? Uh, public transport. Cool. What's your favorite color? Orange. Orange. Really? Okay. Who in the PJ office makes you smile the most? Good question. Don't know. <laughs> Don't know. Okay. We talked about what you miss most about Miami. We already covered that. Uh, if you could be anywhere in the world right now, where would it be? Mm. Don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, that's up for my flash. Maybe questions. I should travel more. Huh? Maybe I should travel more. I, seems like there's always some places I would like to go. Uh, here because the volume adjustment keeps going down on me all right uh there are plenty of places in the world that i would like to go but uh my next my next big trip is clearly going to be to vancouver for mechcon so that'll that'll be good i'm really looking forward to that because i've never been to vancouver before well that that is all the questions that i had written up for you that i sent you earlier today uh you want to start going over some oh wait no we did the yeah we did the giveaway so Taylor, let's do it. We'll do another giveaway, and if you want, we can start the viewer question. Do you have the, the, sure. the Twitch page pulled up that, that you can see? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I got it right here. I'm going to clear the list. All right. And let me take a look at what I have to give away. Let's make this a semi-big one. We're going to make this one worth it. We're going to do 48 hours of premium time plus... A MechCon 2017 Mech Decal plus a Mech Bay. So 48 hours of premium time, the world's 2017 decal, and a Mech Bay. That's quite a bit. So, again, Alex, what should the code be for this one? Hmm. Uh... Oh, okay. This is one for the uh... crap. I had some. Had something. Um, um, accordion rocket launcher atlas for right. all the uh... accordion rocket launcher atlas. Okay, so A C C O R D I A N accordion. Rocket Launcher Atlas. 
Okay, well, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this to you on Hangouts to make sure that it's right. Okay. And if you approve that, that is what we will. Uh, I think it's accordion with an O, but I'm not sure. And has an O at the end, but I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Okay, Commander Ambien put it, it put it one in Twitch chat. There is that. Is he? Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Can you believe I'm a school teacher? <laughs> I teach technology though. I don't teach spelling and grammar. Thank God. Otherwise, these kids would not be starting life correctly. All right. So what? What CD Ambien said, the way he put it in there, I'll type it in again. This is for a Mech Bay, uh, Mechcon 2017 decal. And notice how I said decal, Alex. <laughs> I, I say decal. I don't like decal. Yeah, I don't like it either. But that's 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 a PGI thing. At least, at least somebody's it's got Canadian. their head on to it. I... Yeah, yeah. Well, see, I talked to Canadians, too, who are like, I don't know where they got that from, because that's not right, but it doesn't matter. Uh, two, or 48 hours of premium time, the Metcon 2017 decal, and a Mech Bay for Mech Warrior Online. And I'll, I'll paste that in again. What I typed in the Twitch chat, that's how you want to do it. I'll make sure I kill myself from the entry there, because I don't want to win. All right. Yeah, the accordion rocket launcher was uh, something that people figured out when they first introduced the uh, the, um, the weapons. And people realized, hey, you know, Atlas has 10 tons. You could cram in about six rocket launcher 20s into that and then discard it. And I think a few people took a crack at it. I did some doodles of it and it's with a big, you know, accordion full of holes in front of it. Just I, I can see that. People. Now, I, except, yeah, because when you say that, accordion rocket launcher Atlas, I, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about things from like the board game, right? Yes. Okay. Because yeah, I never played the board game, so you, you some, sometimes you gotta be, you gotta be careful with RJ here. Okay, it's, this stuff goes over my head sometimes. But I, again, I hope to rectify that when I'm in Vancouver for Mechcon. I'm I'm landing pretty early in the afternoon on the Friday before, so I've had a couple people, Mark and Nutty Rat, a couple other people who have offered to introduce me to the board game. So I'm really looking forward to that. All right. Viewer questions. Are you ready for these? Sure. All right. Well, watch that Twitch chat. And if anybody right. if anybody has a question for Alex, be over anything we discuss, just make sure that it's not something that he can't discuss. The current, the current court case, things that haven't been announced yet, etc. And make sure you tag Alex in it with an at Alex. How do you imagine quad-legged mech? Hmm. Um, done a few sketches of them at like Gen Con and stuff. Probably wouldn't draw it with that stiff legged gait that like something like the uh, Goliath has. Looks weird. Um, I kind of veer more towards like uh, spider legged type stuff, preferentially. Um, All right. Hot dogs come in packages of 10, while most hot dog buns come in packages of 8 or 6. <laughs> they want you to spend money. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Either that or, I don't know, probably Comstar again or something. Um, wait, wait. You're, so you, you're saying here... Let me make sure I got this right. You're saying Comstar regulates the prices and the amount of hot dogs we can get versus how many buns we can get. They're always trying to, like, you know, steer everyone towards some sort of uh, technological collapse. It could just be. <laughs> All right. Next question. <laughs> uh, did you ever draw a quad B? Nope. 
I have not. Uh, I need a Piranha Alex. Of course you do. Uh, who is your favorite MWO, WC, Shoutcaster, MD, or MD? Um, I guess if, I guess MD, if those are my only options. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, then. Well, for the greatness that is the Roughneck, if so, thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, of the Clan Max, what was your favorite to draw? The Huntsman. I like drawing that one actually. Ooh, uh, um, but but that actually brings me to something I read online. There's a there's a interview that somebody did with you on the on the MWO forums, mm -hmm. where apparently you were really nervous about the Timberwolf. Is that correct? Yeah, that was uh, oh hell. That interview was probably from back in 2012. Right. Okay. So, but the, but the Timberwolf. Is it just because it's such an iconic mech? That was the mech that Aiden Pride died in, and you know. It... Yep. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll continue here. I was, that was just something that I uh, <laughs> I remembered reading, and I wanted to ask you about it at some point. So. Um. I have two. What's your favorite mech design from any piece of media? Is that desk a gallant? Uh. Fine. Um. I don't know, I kind of have multiple favorites from all over the place, depending on what they're going for. I mean, I'm a huge fan of the of the design of the nine. Um, really cool. Um, and I liked how the aesthetic that they went for it was, you know, the same approach that we have towards designing mechs. We want to make our mechs look humanoid look like for alien biology or whatever um i'm actually a fan of the designs of the um vertical tanks from steel battalion i thought those designs were really cool how they were like super thin but had like these massive armor panels just kind of suspended uh, around them made for a very interesting silhouette Kind of like the uh, the designs for the um, the GKR that uh, I think Wida is doing, that uh, the giant killer robots um, game. I don't know what the status is on that. I haven't looked it up lately. The time when I saw them looked pretty cool. I don't know. I like all sorts of mech designs. Okay. Oh, that, I that, have that, no that, idea yeah. what he. The other question was, what's that mech right there by your right hand? This? Yes, I think that's what he was asking about. Oh, it is a Thanatos. It was a resin sculpt that I bought off of uh, Scott Murphy um, before he got into 3D printing. Do you, guys, do you guys have a 3D printer there on site at PGI? Nah, unfortunately not. Nah. I think too too many of you mech heads would be playing with it all the time. Probably. <laughs> uh, most want the most to be released in MWO. I don't know. Next, um, I'd love to have the uh, thing I say is probably going to get used as a uh, confirmation. So I'm going to withhold that. Answer. That's fine. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. Uh, did you ever draw a Templar? Uh, nope. Uh, Huntsman's Gorgeous. What's your favorite part of the upcoming Battletech PC reboot? Uh, the melee. I really like yeah. Corsos out of light mechs with an Atlas. It's really fun. Um, can Alex lower his voice sensitivity threshold? I, I can get don't that. know how. Uh, I, can, okay. I can get that. Uh... Hang on one second. Do you draw mechs only for your job? And can you say what those other pieces of art are? Um, just, yeah, I've kind of gotten to the point where I don't really have much time for drawing mechs for fun. Do you want to take, <laughs> do you, do you, do you take a look 
real quick. Uh, you want to hold up on the questions for a second? We can take a look mm -hmm. real quick uh, at some of the mechs that you have on your Deviant Art page, and then beginning because Alex does have his own Deviant Art page, Flying Debris. You can see it Which right I've... here. Rarely update, but <laughs> yeah. well, I've got I've got it up on stream right now. Oh, so okay, uh, this like here's a quad-legged mech right here that you drew. That yeah, tell us that about, was, tell us about uh, this one. That looks that looks like an MWO mech. That looks very uh, recent. Mech there was actually a um, design that I had done for some time ago uh he had painted up some minis for me that uh, up there and in turn he wanted uh some custom designs of his um drawn out and stuff and it took me forever and a half to get around to it and i felt really bad but i eventually managed to finish them off so yeah all right uh that was i think a assault class quad mech um Gauss rifle, double large pulse, or something to that extent. Um, can't remember what else was on it. It looks like there's a couple of medium lasers or something underneath the cockpit there. I can make, yeah. it, I can make it bigger, maybe. Yeah, I think it had two medium ER lasers or two pulse lasers in the CT. Yeah, it's that's a pretty cool looking man, and that looks like it's straight at MWO too. So it it has a very modern mech look to it. All right, uh, let's take a look at something else here. If you see it, tell me which one to click on. We'll, we'll pull it up. Oh, actually, this. Oh, it's a Megabot. That's awesome. When did you do that one? Oh, some time ago. Um, I had, uh, I briefly helped out the, uh, the Megabots guys with uh, four of them and shit. That is cool. If they could get their <laughs> megabots to look like that, I'd get season tickets to everything they did. I know that's their <laughs> I know that's their goal. That that thing looks really cool. Thank you. Uh, and then someone look someone uh, Emperor Tuna Fish said love the cigar. Yeah, that was a nice touch. <laughs> Alright, here's your here's an urban mech you did. Now when I when I asked Alex uh what mech he would like me to put up an, on the splash screen. He said, just get an urban mech. I think this is more what you had in mind, right? <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, I did a paint over of the, uh, of that scene from Cowboy Bebop with an Irby. It was, I don't know. They're, right. Do you have, Irby's are the true champions. I was just going to say, do you have a sick fascination with urban mechs? Is that? They're fun to draw, and they're just so <laughs> adorable. They're adorable. I know a guy in the 228 who would say the exact same thing. They're adorable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, some of you, some of you people, that, some of you hardcore people, you got some very interesting words to describe these killing machines. I, I'll give you that. All right. Hello. But so well armed for a 30 ton mech. All right. So if you see, oh, here's a, this looks like an interesting one. This was Alpha Strike companion cover. So did this actually get, uh, was this something that went on one of the manuals or board games? Uh, yeah, yeah. That, uh, that did get, that is the cover for that book. Yeah. Okay. So big on a poster general. This, this is a really good example, everybody, of how Alex's artwork has crossed the many different iterations of this game, be it from the, the, the board games to the video games. Again, the, his modern designs, his modern artwork, modern designs making their way into the board game here. And that's why we... I mean, it, 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 that's that's why when I initially promoted this interview, I put the Catalyst logo on there because I wanted people to realize that he's done work for it all. What that actually is 
gives me another very good question since you started working with catalyst in 2007 exactly which mech warrior and battletech video games can you confirm your artwork is in uh well i guess the designs are in the since it's the mwo max i mean i guess the harebrained schemes max um the uh MWO designs, um, some miniatures have been made based off of my designs, um, on some time ago while I was freelancing, I did the designs for the sci-fi take on Stratego, I did the mech designs for Fear 3. Um, hmm. God, what else? Um, I worked on an briefly games while freelancing, um, that have some mech designs in them. I don't know. I've long, I can't quite remember where everything is. All right, that's still, that's still a lot of stuff. All right, mostly BattleTech though. Right. Majority. Is right. All right. So, is this this image that I'm looking at now? Is this a is this a logging mech, industrial mech that you drew here, or Mister Fix It is the title? Oh, that was uh, that was just a design I did for fun. Just just a design you did for what? Just, just to do it. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> I, 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 mean, I, I think industrial mech. By when I see that there, so that's. I could, I could... Um, I, I think I was uh, at the time, kind of. Heard uh, by I, I still am. I, I'm a big fan of the old uh, Total Annihilation games, where you could just out these massive waves of uh, of units. And I seem to recall there was at least one unit where I think it was called the Necro or whatever that would destroy units back, regardless of whether they were your side or the enemy's side. Hmm. I kind of had that in mind when I was thinking of like, you know, some weird little industrial mech picking through battlefield wreckage to, I don't know, salvage or fix stuff or what have you. All right. Well, this is. Again, everybody, this is Alex's Deviant Art page. Find debris is his name on there. Go ahead and and look him up. And it's up to you, Alex. You want to answer a couple more viewer questions, or because oh, we're, we're yeah. about we're getting we're running up on two hours since the stream started here. So I'm gonna leave it to you to to decide how much further we go here. But if you guys have any more questions, he stays good. But if you have any more questions, why don't you shoot him a couple here real quick. Uh, tag or put Alex in it or do full caps question in front of your questions so we can spot them easier as we go. And uh, I don't know, Alex, you tell me. Is there something else I should look at here while they, while they get their questions ready? Sorry. Sorry, what? I guess is, is there something else I should look at on your DeviantArt page while they get their questions ready? Um, or do we need to do that giveaway, don't we? We didn't do the giveaway. Yeah, we do. Okay, yeah, get your questions ready, everybody. Get your questions ready. Type in questions in all caps or Alex in all caps. This is the giveaway page. I'm going to put the code in Twitch chat one more time that you need to type in. We're going to give you guys about 30 more seconds. If you uh, pull up the one with the uh, imp in the, <laughs> the I don't know what I don't know, I don't know which one of oh, the imp in a chair. Okay. Oh, that's a cool looking picture too, man. <laughs> that one though, that was just me. Uh... This one here, the scout droid. I'm, oh, I'm sorry, uh, that was the wrong one. I, I just I, that one just caught my eye as I was scrolling through. So that was. 
The imp in a chair. I'm looking for it. The urban mech in the doorway. It's next to the uh, boy Bebop Herbie. That one was. Uh... Oh, I see it. <laughs> oh, I know. That that's, a, that's a bicycle. Of... That's a bicycle. That wasn't. That wasn't what I was thinking. I'm trying to find it. Uh, yeah, that one was just uh, me paint a, a screenshot from Metal Ocalypse. You said next to the... Oh, the one... Okay, there it is. Get out of here. You belong in a garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> I like Metal Ocalypse. It's a fun show. Yeah, because we're doing the giveaway right now, Roken gonna do the giveaway right now here i'll turn i'll turn that off real quick so you can see the image he's talking about uh we'll go back to the interview screen and turn that on that's the one he was talking about right there so anyways let's do the giveaway everybody we've got again this is for two mech bay no sorry 48 hours of premium time one mech bay and one mwo wc 2017 decal we've got 25 people entered in to win let's do it huh. what is your favorite giant robot anime hmm well we're, we're rolling the giveaway right now so hold on to that question <laughs> hold on to that question I, I know you can't hear it but i've got the music playing in my head it's pretty loud All right, Iron Kilo from the 228th IBR. I was actually just talking with him earlier on uh, on Discord. All right, Iron Kilo, congratulations! You got 48 hours of premium time, a Mech Bay, and the MWWC 2017 decal. And I will actually shoot those over to you here at, when the interview is done. All right, Alex, what was that question? Do it. Do it now. Uh, it was, uh, <laughs> what was the favorite um, mech anime, I guess? Um, um, I really enjoyed um, Gundam 8th MS Team a long time ago when I was a teenager and really enjoyed how they, uh, to make the Gundams really feel like, a lot more realistic than most of the other of them usually did. Uh, fan of Evangelion um, movies, um, although it's been a long time since I've watched them, so I should watch them because I can't remember anything. Um, I like Big O Robot Carnival. I like Robot Carnival. That one was pretty good, although it didn't actually have that many robots in it. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Um, when we look at modern games that have mech robots, mech style robots in them, when I say modern, I mean something within the last five, six, six years is there anything that stood out to you outside of your own work that you really like uh i actually enjoy uh titanfall quite a bit or titanfall 2 anyway i didn't really play the first one well, i probably should have uh, i like their designs uh i would prefer if they had like more detail to their damage system i guess but uh i do like the aesthetics of it that's one I've actually heard people mention a couple times, and uh, I'd always said I was going to try out sometime, but I haven't as of yet. I've been I've been so absorbed in MechWarrior Online and BattleTech recently that I just haven't really explored out too much lately. Also, I really like um, I really like Brigador, like top-down shoot 'em up type. Uh type game and some mechs in it and apparently the creators are Battletech fans and stuff and it kind of shows huh. the uh, something that uh, North Korea might 
manufacture something in the distant future or whatever um like a bunch of factions that includes i don't know one faction that cobbles everything out of garbage another one that looks like 70s era space race technology and the other ones like old soviet style equipment and pretty fun uh, Brigador up armored edition. I think I saw beef actually beef or maybe it was maybe it was bear claw. I think I saw them playing this yes, game one time. <laughs> actually, it looks pretty cool. Oh yeah, I see. This actually looks pretty pretty fun. Check that out sometime. All right, you see any other questions pop up there that you wanted to answer? Uh, apparently, I need to check out Code Geos. Um, okay. Oh. Um, Game of Thrones. Um, yes. Yes? <laughs> I feel like their writing has gone downhill. Well, and... uh, could that have something to do with the fact that they're making up as they go now? Probably. Probably. Uh, and did, did, did maybe you, if did you watch season hmm? seven yeah yeah i'm all caught up okay i'm, I'm worried yeah. about spoilers here but i just i didn't feel like enough important people i game of thrones put me on that on that path where if, if it was a character that they spent a lot of time developing that i would re, that i was going to come to really really like i would expect them to die soon and hmm. i didn't feel like i got that at all Hmm. Think about it. I mean, well, I guess they... Well, if you know who, that they've been building up to that. Although he pretty much spent most of the, that season and a whole lot of the last one just creeping around being useless. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't like him to begin with. So, you know. <laughs> I mean, when they, when they spent all this time in character development... Mm -hmm. and, and it's a character that's one of the good guys, one of the ones that you think this is going to be the one that's going to save the day, and then watches his wife get gutted with the baby inside at the Red Wedding and everything, you know, and it's just like, that's an old one. That's from the old season. If they're, if they're not at that season yet, they're hopeless case. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's, if they somehow avoided that spoiler and got spoiled here that's well. yeah so i mean there was just there i i think that's one of the things that's missing currently from the the most recent season is and it's not really a spoiler people definitely do die important people or people who have been important in the past die as they do in every season by just that 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 hero no heroes yeah uh, I don't know, like, the, the impression I got with this last season was that it, it almost felt like fan fiction grade, I guess. Right, yeah. Like, it, yeah. It, it felt like a lot of moving the characters around like chess pieces rather than feeling natural. And the teleporting didn't really help. It, it just kind of felt like, well, so-and-so has to be here to tell so-and-so this thing or else to tell them to so, tell someone else this other thing and just yeah the, the characters didn't feel like people they felt like chess pieces moving around um i don't know how much of that is just imagination playing in no i i, I see that I, I think i think at this point game of thrones needs mechs i would totally be on board <laughs> as, as i'm sure many of us would well i Alex... mean I, I don't. I, they would. The, the fans would complain. I. I, I won't. I won't. I won't <laughs> Next make everything better. Yeah. If if your coffee doesn't have enough sugar, add a mech, right? If Game of Thrones is starting to just be, be just not right, add a mech. You know. If Mary Poppins had a mech, that movie would have been so much better. <laughs> of course. Well, Alex, I don't want to take up any more of your time. We are at the two-hour mark for this thing. Um, All right. <laughs> I, I do I do very much appreciate the time that you've given us. Uh, 
it, it has certainly been an honor uh, to talk to you. I being on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, your you your work in this universe. I mean, we might we might be a niche universe when it comes to sci-fi and fantasy, but for those of us who are truly fans of this universe, uh, you're you're pretty much a legend in it. And so I really do appreciate the time that, that you, you, you spent with me here doing this interview. I, uh, I'm just I, a fan that got lucky. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, 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 you know, I guess Darren could say the same. I started a conversation on Reddit a couple of days ago. Uh, I caught some people in MWO, some of those, the, the people that were doing all the team killing. And Darren was watching my stream and somebody said something about, well, who, who's, who's that? And they answered it. The conversation went on to the point, well, I, I'm not going to go through all the stupid stuff, but someone said, well, hey, look, he's promoting and playing MWO for a living. He's pretty much living the dream. And so, I, I, and I fully, wholeheartedly agreed with that. And, and you you got lucky. You're, you seem to be living, as you say it, uh, and you're, you're drawing these mechs that we love playing so much you got to be living the dream too bro brother i mean it, it's i would i if i had artistic talent i'd give anything to be sitting where you're sitting right now oh. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm glad you like them well that being the all that being said again once again thank you very much alex i appreciate you being here thank you to all the viewers who tuned in for the stream tonight for the interview i will get this up on youtube uh, as soon as as soon as I click stop streaming, I will get this ported over to YouTube. It'll be up on my YouTube channel, um, and YouTube unfortunately will not let me get my own name for my YouTube channel yet. Uh, so I have to make up crazy ones as I go. But I can get you guys a link here so that you can follow it. I guess I guess I have to. I just started this YouTube channel semi recently, so I guess it just doesn't have enough followers yet or whatever. I'm not sure how that works. But I'll post it in here for you guys. Interview will be up there. Share it with your friends. Let everybody know. Alex, once again, thank you. We're gonna call it thank quits you. from here. Uh, let's see, actually let's, let's see huh? let's let's see who's let's see who's streaming MWO right now, and let's let's make their night. Jury uh, and then Burby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Me, Beef's got lots of viewers. I love Beef. Let's just let's just pass them everybody over to Beef. Everybody should know Beef. He makes good videos. So we're gonna we're gonna pass you guys over to the Beef. I hope you have a very good rest of your night, and uh, look for the video to be up on YouTube very soon. Good night, everybody. Good night, Alex. Good night. Good night.